Okay, I got it. Good morning and welcome to Breeze View Overview Webinar. We're going to be starting here in about a minute or two, waiting for everyone else to join in. No, it looks like everybody's on if you want to go ahead and start. Okay, okay, just please confirm that uh, you can hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Can everybody else hear? Okay, uh, did they uh, confirm? Because I, yes, at least uh, someone did. Okay, uh, oh, my name is Noam Kadamon. I am the uh, I'm in charge of uh, NMS. One of the guys in charge of N N NMS in Tel Aviv. Uh, we'll be doing about uh, an hour of a session of a breeze view overview for new users. Uh, after which we will have time for uh, a question. <coughs> uh, just a few things. I'll be I'll be mostly going over the uh, various client screens and take advantage of uh, the client in order to dig down in each one of them for the actual functionality. Uh, for um, more in-depth uh, issues, we will have, uh, we have a, a session for uh, advanced users, basically uh, meant for uh, questions and answers, uh, scheduled for next week. So uh, if you are uh, a bit experienced with freeze you and you have questions, you can either uh, enter them in the chat area, uh, save them for the end. If it's uh, very important, you can uh, uh, just, uh, again, place them in the chat area. And if it's something that uh, requires a bit more demonstration on a uh, lab system or something like that, or uh, preparation from us to prepare an example, uh, best is to just uh, uh, give us in advance the questions for next week's session. Okay, so I'll begin. Uh, breeze view. Okay, web client. Uh, this is uh, the welcome screen. You will have uh, the client access. Uh, this is the format HTTP, the IP of your specific server. Port 8082 is the uh, default. It can be changed in uh, if there is a need to do that. I don't think uh, we have more than one customer currently using a different uh, port. Uh, the recommended uh, browser is the latest version of Chrome, either uh, 32 or 64-bit uh, 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 works fine. You can also work with BreezeView with uh, other browsers, but uh, we do find here and there specific functionalities or displays that uh, don't behave the same. So it's always uh, recommended to use Chrome. 
Uh, default client credentials uh, upon a new installation are user admin, password admin. They can be changed, of course, later on. Either uh, change the uh, password of user admin or create any number of users with uh, different uh, authorization. Okay, we uh, signed in. Uh, the dashboard, the main screen of Breezeview. Okay, you can see on the right, uh, right hand, uh, upper right hand side, uh, the user logged in, the time of the login. The about shows us uh, the Breezeview version. Uh, 7.2 is the current Breezeview version, matching the version of the uh, LTE network. Uh, 37. Uh, since uh, this uh, presentation was prepared, we've moved to 45 different bug fixes, etc. If you will have a new installation, it will be 45, and this is recommended to move to 45 if you have a 37 or an earlier one. We start with devices management. Okay, we see here, okay, this uh, uh, item in the dashboard called Network Summary. Uh, it gives us basic information about the devices we have in the network. Okay, if we start from the left-hand side, we can see the total number of devices, 21 in this case, when they are divided into eNodeBs and EPCs. All, kind, all types of eNodeBs are uh, aggregated uh, and uh, all types of EPCs as well. If you have an embedded enodeB, which functions as both, then it will be a, a, a counted as enodeB. Each, uh, so we had the total managed, and I'm looking from left to right, managed, unreachable, admin locked, which is not very interesting, and unlicensed. <laughs> Each widget we press, okay? Uh, will get us into the devices. As it says here, eNodeBs and EPCs are managed by NetConf management protocol, and we'll say a few words about NetConf. Uh, currently, the new uh, telco uh, protocol for managing uh, devices, replacing uh, SNMP and other protocols, all communication with the devices is done over HTTP, much faster and more efficient and generic than uh, SNMP or previous protocols. What, one of the uh, big advantages or characteristics and advantages of NetConf is that the management system and the device uh, are in constant uh, continuous uh, connection and sync, meaning uh, every change done uh, through uh, the network, the management system, through Breezeview, uh, immediately uh, takes effect on the device. Every, uh, so everything happening on the device, be, be it alarms or uh, a malfunction or uh, local uh, changes will be reflected immediately in uh, Breezeview. The NetConf supports the full device cycle meaning starting from discovery, when uh, the only thing need, that needs to be done is to define, uh, to configure in the device the IP of the NMS system of review. The device initiates the connection, and from here on, they're in continuous, continuous uh, connection through uh, configuration, provisioning, uh, backup, uh, firmware, uh, firmware upgrades, etc. Okay, as we said, device discovery, provisioning and configuration, fault management, and uh, uh, one more thing we have is continuous uh, performance manager management KPIs collection. We'll see the actual uh, KPIs uh, later on when we get to that stage, but uh, basically once every five minutes, each of the devices uh, is connected, uh, contacted, and uh, we collect uh, KPIs, performance KPIs, uh, which uh, are very useful, as we will see, we will see later on. 
and uh, the five minute uh, measurements are saved uh, for a configurable number uh, amount of time uh, in the BreezeView system database. Back to the devices view. Okay, how to access the devices view? Okay, this uh, network summary widget that we saw before, starting with total, managed, and reachable, etc. Each one of the square of the uh, uh, parts uh, divided into eNode Vs and EPCs. Okay, if we press the the square itself, then it will uh, get us into the devices view. Okay, we can also press the link. These are links, five EPCs or 16 you know, these. We can press the actual link and it will bring us uh, to the EPCs. In this case, all the EPCs of the network, total EPCs. Okay, another way to do that is to use on the left hand side, you can see we have a menu a icon. We press it to get the menu option. In this case, we go to devices, choose devices, and we are in the devices view. Okay, so we had uh, three, basically two ways uh, of reaching the devices view, either either through uh, the the widget, which can get us to a type of devices and type of manage, management status, or the menu option. The devices view. In all the views, you will see of the upper left hand side the name of the view and a search bar. Okay, so I'll say we'll say now a few words about the search bar, which is uh, more or less the same in all uh, Breeze View screens. Okay, the first simple way, simplest way to get the search bar uh, is just to type a string, press enter. And then what Breezy will do is search for this string in all the uh, on all the uh, attributes of all the elements that exist in the table. Uh, the uh, parameters that we see in the table, but also the ones that we don't see at the main. Okay, this is the simplest option. And of course, like it sounds, it's not very efficient. So in large networks, it can take some time. If we use this widget here on the right hand side, this uh, button on the right hand side of the search widget, then it will give us uh, an option to create a specific and more, much more efficient search and use it. Okay, we see you press the button, we choose new, we give it a name. Okay, and we give it a, and we give it a, a uh, condition. Okay, in this case, where device ID is 15. Okay, and the name is search by device ID. When we then we press a save and search, and it can work. What we have here on the right hand side in the line of buttons, the one that is currently highlighted, uh, is a button that enables us to clear whichever filter is currently used. Again, we will see that in all the screens. Okay, back to devices view. The same widget we have here, the one that we saw in the uh, in the dashboard, again, we can press the square and uh, move through total, managed, and licensed, etc. And we can press the line, the uh, compressed, Enode Bs or EPCs within each one for filtering. Each line in the in the in the table is a specific is one device as we see here. The columns that we see for each device uh, starts from the default that we can see here: type of device, state, uh, type of device. By by the way, you can see it says Enode B, and others it will say EPC. I'm on the left hand side right right now. And we have an, a, a point, in this case, an orange uh, point on the, uh, where it says it would be, which means that this device currently has one uh, alarm. The, the coloring uh, convention is just like an SMMP and the severity convention. In this case, it's a major alarm. 
device state. It can be managed, unmanaged, unlicensed, uh, unreachable. In this case, we have a green V and says manage. The device model, Compact 1000, it can be Compact 3000, it can be a breezeway uh, of different types. It can be Breeze Compact 1000E, meaning embedded, etc. The device name, which can be configured, device ID, IP address area, and software version. These are the default fields. Okay. We can choose one or more devices. We can choose more, sorry, we can choose one or more devices uh, to view. And you can see that the ones that I are highlighted, we can do that using the control button, which will enable us, well, as we will see, uh, to perform a group operation. The device ID, you can see that it is uh, light blue, which means, uh, as we'll see in other screens, that it is a link. Okay, pressing this, uh, this link will uh, drill us down into the configuration screen of the specific device. A line of buttons, of control buttons in the upper right-hand side Again, uh, these buttons can have different, uh, can uh, contain a different variety of functionalities. And uh, uh, you will have them always in the same place. Sorry, something here is making noise for me. Okay. The, uh, the button on the right-hand side, quite the same in all screens, it gives us uh, the number of, uh, of lines you see in the table. Okay, the option is between 10 and 500. Refresh button. Pressing this button will uh, refresh the view with the, the details in the database. We will see that in case of UEs, what it actually does is refresh a uh, real time with the UE or CP. Export button. Each of the views, most of them have this export button. We can choose to export the, the uh, information in the view either to CSV or to Excel, which has, a, which holds a bit more information. Column selection button. As I said, the, co the columns that we see here, type, device, etc., are the default ones. In each view, we will have um, a much larger set of optional uh, parameters we can display in the table. The choice simply uh, uh, move. The ones that are uh, highlighted are uh, constant on the left-hand side, which is the ones that are displayed. Uh, all the rest can be moved left to show right uh, to hide them. But in any case, uh, if you export like we did before, okay, it will uh, it will export everything, the, both the, the columns that are displayed and the ones that are not. Admin action, lock release device. Uh, there was a logic, it seems like a good idea what, when this was uh, uh, Added, I haven't heard of any use for it yet, so I'll just uh, skip over. Software download button. Okay, a very uh, important functionality. It can be done on a single device, like we see one device highlighted in the table below, or multiple devices, uh, only of the same type, of course, if we highlight more than one line. Okay, the options uh, are uh, match the three phases of a software upgrade on a network devices. Load the software to backup. This is done from the Breezy server uh, using TFTP. TFTP being uh, an integral part of the uh, Breezy installation. Run software from backup and make backup uh, file as main. Okay, basically what we can do is just uh, perform these tasks 
tasks one after another, and uh, this way we can uh, upgrade a large portion or all the network in a single uh, in a single uh, operation. A few words about firmware upgrades. More than I said before, both EPCs and e Node B will pass on both ways. Um, as I said, the the, the netconf is done over HTTP. Firmware upgrade, um, configuration file upgrade, etc., is done over TFTP. As TFTP uh, is done uh, is installed in the Breezeview server. UE firmware will be transferred by HTTP. Uh, again, HTTP file server is part uh, a, an integral part of Breezeview installation. Both upgrades for EPC, Zenodes, and UEs can, uh, can be done from one to all the uh, matching devices in the network in the same operation. Uh, let's go on with the control buttons. Okay, device action. We were at the firmware download uh, upgrade uh, button before, now device action. Again, this can be done on single or multiple devices according to the number of lines uh, we highlighted in the table. We can reboot the device, we can reset to factory default, we can uh, save, meaning download from the device configuration file meant for a restore. If, uh, if there is a need arises, so we can uh, back up a good configuration in case something happens, uh, and, the, and we can load license. Cell transmission action buttons, uh, actions button, uh, relatively new, okay, it enables us to stop transmission and to start transmission of a uh, cell. Okay, in this case, we see that only cell zero is highlighted, meaning this uh, device uh, chosen here, the one device chosen here, is a single sector device. If we would have uh, chosen a dual uh, sector device, then both of them would have been highlighted. Delete devices button. Okay, again, if I choose this button now, then the device highlighted will be deleted from Breezy. Uh, now, as I said, the connection between Breezy and the devices is constant, and the discovery is initiated by uh, the LTE device. So basically, what will happen if I delete this device is that within a few seconds it will be discovered again. Okay. The use for this is in case, for instance, we switch a device from one breezy to a second if you split the network or uh, something like that. Uh, and uh, there are cases in which there is something, there are problems with the management. And like, uh, it's a bit like, uh, you know, we're starting Windows. There are is, uh, a few types of problems in which if I delete the device and let it get discovered, then it will uh, be okay. Again, just something uh, to, uh, general practice uh, that you can use uh, if you uh, if you have the need. Create template from device. Okay. Uh, if we want the, the method by which a breeze you performs multiple operations on multiple devices, is that we create a template from a uh, device that we know. Is, uh, is correct, and then this template can be implemented to other devices, okay, to one or more devices. Note that uh, the parameters that will be saved in the template that I create from one device include only the general ones, not the unique ones, like device ID, device name, etc. Okay, so it's uh, actually quite practical. Okay, we will see in case of in case of UEs, the logic is a bit different, okay, but we will get there. Apply template from device, a uh, two device or two devices, okay, the complementary one to the one we have to create template from a single device. Duplicate uh, device, okay, 
uh, just about the same in one operation. A few words about the multiple devices actions. Multiple configuration is available for software upgrade. Like we saw before, it should be, uh, of course, devices of the same type in a single operation. Uh, device actions, as we saw before, we can reboot, factory reset, or load licenser to any number of devices of, again, of the same type. Uh, no, in this case, I'm sorry, it doesn't need to be the same type. Cell transmission actions, like we saw before, apply some templates. And that is it for a device, for a inner BPC. Okay, next button. View device KPIs. Okay, we talked about KPIs being collected constantly once every five minutes from all devices. Uh, this is the button we will use uh, to do that. Okay, if we press this button when one device is chosen, okay, if there is more than one device chosen, then this button will be grayed out. But in this case, we have one device chosen. If we uh, push the button, then we get uh, this screen. Okay, the screen is called device performance. Uh, I'm going, I'm, I will start with the controls on top of the uh, table, and then I go to the actual KPI. Okay, so we have uh, a screen called device performance. We have a uh, KPI for zooming interface okay we will see that in all the kpi views in this case we can choose from time to time or uh, immediate buttons for two day one day one week and one month at the top bar we have a uh, chosen kpi uh, active ues registered ues air link utilization and throughput for uplink and for downlink. Again, the area utilization also for uplink and for downlink. The values we see above are the values of the latest collection. Again, it's once every five minutes. So these are the latest five minute uh, values. Also, these are the values that we will see on the right hand side of each of the KPI tables of the graphs. Okay, the KPIs themselves. Okay, now I'm going over the tables with the graphs that we see inside. Okay, registered and active UEs. It's a count of number of UEs. Collection every five minutes. Air link utilization. I will not go over the, the uh, I guess you all are uh, familiar with the description of air link utilization. It's in percentage of uh, usage of air link resources. A separate value for uplink and for downlink. Okay, as you see again, a value for every five minutes. Throughput of uh, this uh, sector, you can see also a value every five minutes, separate for uplink and for downlink in beats per second. If we do the same, okay, this was, if you remember, we drilled down into a an enode b a kpi view if we would have chosen an epc kpi view okay these are the uh, kpis for the standard kpis for epc okay we have the same uh, zoom uh, uh, dialogue on the top and we have in this case uh, capacity kpi service statistics kpi throughput and uh, throughput in bits per second and it's packets per second. Okay, the same logic of the, of the display, including the last uh, collected values on top of the table. Okay, a bit more about KPIs. As we said, they are collected continuously, fixed interval of five minutes, fixed meaning they cannot be uh, changed. The collection is done over NetConf, over HTTP. It is very efficient. The overhead of this collection is almost negligible. The amount of KPIs saved is configurable. Now, in this uh, option, we're talking about the time back uh, to save. Okay, by default, it is defined by um, 
number of uh, database partitions. Okay, usually, let's say in a network of a few hundred devices, it will be between four months and six months back. Okay, we can configure it uh, to save more, we can configure it to save less from different considerations. For instance, if the machine, Breezy machine, is short on disk space, which is not recommended, then we can reduce it uh, so the disk will not be uh, filled up, etc. Okay, but basically uh, we can configure the uh, time back to save the KPIs. KPIs are, uh, are the main user of uh, disk space in Breezy. Just a ballpark figure, let's say, a, a network about, say, 200 uh, eNodeBs EPCs with the default settings will take about uh, 400, 500 gigabytes when it reaches the steady state in which it deletes every day the older measurements and uh, collects the newer ones. Again, but this is just a ballpark figure uh, and it can be altered. There are KPIs that are uh, displayed uh, as they are received from the devices. For instance, the number of uh, active uh, active UEs, number of registered UEs, etc. There are other KPIs which are aggregated, like throughput. The, the, uh, the data received from the uh, devices is raw and uh, breeze view. It has a, a logic of aggregating them to the number that we see in the table. Uh, others, like uh, Airlink uh, utilization, are uh, uh, calculated okay, by Breeze View with, uh, uh, with the formulas uh, that are um, proprietary to Telrad according to the raw data received from the devices. I'm saying this because in different cases in which uh, we have uh, problems or trouble with uh, the KPI consistency or the KPI values, then uh, this is what we look at. Okay, if, it, uh, if these are KPIs that are uh, trivial, like a uh, number of EAUEs connected or aggregated, uh, then we will uh, uh, most of the time look for the reason in the eNodeB or EPC. Okay, if it's with error link utilization, we will most likely look for the uh, cause of the error in breathing. Uh, just uh, uh, before we finish with KPIs, we have a few words about UE KPIs. They are collected using TR69, which is the protocol for managing uh, uh, UEs or CPEs. And since the CPEs are not uh, connected by wire uh, to uh, the management system or to the base station, then it is done over the air, meaning it uh, consumes air link resources. Okay, for that reason, uh, when, we, uh, when we get to the eKPIs, you will see that uh, they are uh, not collected uh, continuously, but only per demand. And yes, and they are not saved in the database. Okay, so we have an option uh, to collect UE KPIs. We have an option to export them with the same export button we saw before, but they are not uh, saved in the database. Okay, we, con we will continue with the controls again in the device view. Okay, spectrum analyzer action button. Okay, we, we will see that we have, a, in, in addition to the KPIs that are constantly, the performance KPIs that are constantly collected, we have also a spectrum analyzer connection, collection. Okay, maximum hold all antennas that uh, constantly collected. And by the way, you can see that the device that we see here is a dual sector device. Okay, we have at the top of the screen uh, the last collected values for each of the separate cells. And, okay, and one of them uh, displayed in red, 
one of them displayed in blue. The, the results themselves are not very indicative. This is the lab system. The last button, tell UE KPIs button. Okay, it enables us to uh, to move from this cell to see the KPIs of the UEs that are connected to this cell. Okay, this is for a single sector in UV, as we see cell one is grayed out. This is for a dual sector, a compact, uh, both cells are available. Okay, this is what we get when we choose the KPIs of the UE, of the UE and uh, I'll just in a minute, I'll point you to something that is very unique in this view. What we have here are the uh, UEs, the, 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 uh, we see the UEs, in this case, two UEs only, again, it's a lab system, of cell zero of E node B to 540. Now, if we move from left to right, you can see that we have the CPE model, model product class serial number in Z, online or offline. And from here on, you will see a serving in OBs, PX power, RSRPs, CINRs, etc. These are KPIs collected over TR69 from the UE. But if we move to the right, then you will see a, a downlink a parameters, BELR, MCS, modulation, ARSSI, CINR, which are parameters of the cell that is connected uh, to the U, to these UEs. Okay, in this case, the cell we uh, open the view from. This is quite unique in the, in the sense that you have this view here, uh, which you can export, and it gives you a combination of the KPIs of the UE and okay, real-time KPIs that were collected uh, just now when you opened this view. Uh, along with, alongside with the uh, performance KPIs of the sector they are connected to, okay, which is uh, which uh, does for you the work of uh, matching them. So you can see, for instance, uh, in cases where the UEs have uh, bad uh, performance parameters and the sector has good ones, so you know you can search for the problem in the UE and. Uh, if it's the other way around, the UE has uh, a, a good uh, radio parameters and the sector is, uh, for instance, uh, uh, used to 100% uh, utilization, for instance, then something is wrong with the total uh, division of devices on sector. Again, just an example from the top of my head, but uh, uh, the advantages of seeing them all in the same view. Now, the same view that we see here, the same view that we see here, we also have, okay, this just show you the, the, uh, the KPIs themselves, okay? The same view that we have here, we also have uh, in a view of uh, the same uh, parameters for all the CPEs of the, for in the network. Okay, so basically what we can do just like we chose to see the KPIs of the CPEs connected to the sector, we can do the same, see, get the real-time uh, KPIs of all the CPEs of the network, along with, alongside with the KPIs of the sector that is connected to each. As I said, a device ID in the view, in most of the views, uh, when it's uh, uh, colored, a light blue is actually a link to the configuration screens of the device. If we press the device ID, okay, then it drills us down into the device details or uh, AKA configuration view. Okay, we have here on top, as, in, as we saw in the KPIs view, we have the latest collected KPIs, active UEs, registered, utilization, throughput, in this case, a dual uh, a dual uh, sector uh, uh, base station. So we have them for cell zero and for cell one. This is on the top, okay, the top of the uh, main configuration area. We have the line of buttons, okay, just about the same one that we had in the uh, devices view. 
On the left-hand side, this is also something that is uh, quite uh, the same in various screens. We have read-only parameters. Okay, like we see here, it's an enode B. In this case, embedded enode B, compact E, device ID, device name, uptime, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, in, the, in the upper uh, right-hand side of the pane, of the left pane, we have an expand collapse control. If we open it, then we get additional parameters like software version, like licensing information, uh, etc. In the main configuration area, we have sliders that uh, by default, uh, most of them will be closed. Okay, we see each one has an icon of an uh, arrow pointing left, uh, pointing right, meaning it's closed. If we press the icon, then it expands. Okay, for instance, okay, the devices is that slider, if we press it, we see the basic device parameters, device ID, name, area, etc. Uh, and by the way, if you remember, we uh, I said that the way we uh, devices are discovered in uh, Netconf is by configuring the NMS IP, uh, the BreezeView IP in the devices. Okay, you can see it in BreezeView IP address. What you can also see here is that we can configure uh, more than one uh, management system, BreezeView, for each device. Uh, now, first of all, uh, we said it and it's possible, but just remember there are limitations and things to uh, beware of when you do that. But it is uh, basically the, the simplest uh, way for a uh, sort of high availability, okay? Because if we manage the devices uh, in more than one uh, you, then if one uh, uh, stops working or uh, makes trouble, we can always use the, the other. Now, this is based on the fact that, again, the PR69, the Netcon overload, overhead in the connectivity management and PM collection is uh, very, very low. So it is not uh, a real effort, uh, not on the devices and not on the network. But once again, I want to stress that there are limitations to this. I will not get into them now, but we have to, if we do that, we need to be very careful uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, comply with a few limitations. Okay, we have uh, buttons for collapse or expand all the uh, sliders in the uh, configuration view. Uh, like I said before, most of the screens, the controls, and the functionalities are common throughout Breezeview screen, so uh, we'll be a bit uh, uh, faster from now on uh, when we see uh, next uh, screen. Okay, back to the dashboard, and uh, uh, this means we're at this stage done with the EPC enode B's uh, views and uh, configuration. Okay, now we'll go to UE view. First of all, we have it here, as you see the widget UE network summary. We will have a, um, a uh, square for each type of UEs. Okay, the UEs is that you can manage in Breeze UE, 12,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, etc. Okay, pressing each of the uh, squares uh, will get us into uh, the UE view filtered by uh, the type of devices we device we chose. If we choose the total on the left-hand side, then we will see all of them. Second option to enter the devices view, again, using the menu, UEs, and we have here the UEs option. Uh, profiles and templates. Again, they are to do with uh, a, with a more advanced uh, configuration, automatic configuration, or multiple configuration. Uh, just remember that, and we'll not get to into the into this right now. UE management is done by TR sixty nine protocol. 
Okay, so a few words, like we said, about uh, NetGrant, about TR69. Uh, currently still the telco standard for CTE or UE management. It is uh, inherited from a previous uh, uh, technologies. In WiMAX, it was the same. Uh, basically meant for management of, uh, of uh, fixed or nomadic uh, UEs or CPEs. Uh, not very compatible with mobile networks, which is not, which are not the ones we are dealing with. You always, when you talk about uh, UE management, as opposed to, you know, these EPCs or any other wired equipment, is that everything is done uh, over the air. Okay, the communication between uh, the management system and the devices is done over the air, in this case over HTTP. But over the air, meaning it will always uh, cost us uh, resources that, uh, again, in a nutshell, we would rather have uh, used for data. Okay, so there is always a dilemma here uh, of, uh, of uh, getting the golden uh, path between being very hands on in terms of management and uh, uh, reducing the overhead. Of the over of the uh, of the over the air traffic. Okay, so this uh, this uh, uh, entails a few uh, basic characteristics of uh, of UE management. We saw that in you know these EPCs, uh, the management is constant. The management system is in constant connection with the devices. The telco standard, the recommendation for uh, UE, so being in contact with UEs, is for once every 24 hours. Now, of course, this can be uh, set to uh, various different values. Again, it's all a matter of, uh, of finding the golden path between the two options uh, that we I spoke about before. Again, the protocol supports the full device cycle from discovery, provisioning, configuration, a collection of KPIs, in this case on demand, and configuration, either single or multiple devices. The UE view. Okay, again, on the left hand, the upper side, we have uh, the, the name of the view, UE, the same search widget that we saw before. Uh, in this case, by the way, uh, you remember we talked about a, a basic search, just typing a string and letting the system look. Uh, in ROG, let's say in networks, uh, you know, these EPCs can have, let's say, hundreds of devices in most networks, but uh, UEs are in the thousands. So if we talked about an inefficient search, in this case, it's much more uh, uh, relevant. The same, uh, the same uh, type of buttons, of control buttons on the upper right hand side. The specific one, you can see the right hand one is a refresh button. In this case, what it does actually is uh, if we choose highlight a device and we choose the refresh button, then uh, the uh, breeze view will synchronize the, uh, with the device real time and show us the parameters that uh, that uh, have changed if they have changed on the device. Uh, on the, the left side buttons, a button is UE detailed, uh, giving us more details about the specific UE. Again, the widget that we saw before, the total devices, and according to device type. Okay, this enables us uh, filtering a, a immediate filtering to view a single type of device. For instance, if we're talking about uh, firmware upgrades, it is very useful because this is only always will be done uh, on devices of a single type. We have, uh, a, as we saw uh, in device ID when we talked about EMOVs and EPC, in this case we have two fields that are. Uh, uh, colored light blue, meaning they are linked, which are serial number of the device and the INZ ID of the device. Okay, if we choose uh, an INZ and press on this link, 
uh, what will get what it will get us is the end details of the specific device okay again you see on the left hand side uh, sorry let's start with the operation button okay uh, in this case the additional one that is unique here is the detach UE button okay an important uh, functionality we can do directly from Brazil. On the left hand side, you have a read only pane, okay, showing us basic information. The right, the main part of the screen is the configuration part, okay. Any of the parameters here, we can configure and then save the uh, changes we make, okay. If we choose uh, the serial number of the specific UE and press it, then we get into the UE details view, the configuration. Uh, the configuration uh, view of a single uh, UE. Okay, the same buttons on the right hand side, the same line. Okay, we have a sync from UE here and uh, a check UE status, which is basically a ping operation done with the UE. This shows us, if you see on the upper uh, part of the screen here, UE status online. Okay, this, uh, this uh, check UE status is the operation if it's successful that results in the, the status being registered as online here okay read only parameters we have here ue status the last time it performed the uh, communication with uh, with review uptime in seconds manufacturer serial number ip address etc If we, you remember the on the right uh, upper hand, in the upper right hand side of this left pane, we have the expand button. In this case, if we press it, what will happen is that review will connect to the PPE ad hoc over to your 69 and request for a set of KPIs. Okay, you see PX power, RSRPs, SINRs, etc. Basically, the same set of KPIs that we saw before in the UE KPI view, this time for a single CP. Okay, so every time we pre we open this pane, the operation will be done real time. At the bottom of the right hand pane, you can see a refresh button. Every time we press it, it will refresh the screen again real time. An efficient way to uh, follow up on the performance of a single CP. If we're doing a specific, um, a very hands-on uh, operation there. Again, the same slider functionality. As you see here, the device info is open. All the fields that are not uh, configurable will be uh, printed without a frame around them. In this case, you see provisioning code that can be configurable is uh, that can be configured is within a uh, text box. And uh, this for now will be uh, what we'll talk about uh, is alarms view. Okay, again, two ways of accessing the alarms view through the widget in which we can uh, access either uh, the alarm view in general or only the critical, only the majors, only minors, only warnings. Uh, and for each, we can see the alarms for ENODs and EPCs if we want to drill down. Uh, by the way, uh, we mentioned it before, but uh, the, the severity uh, settings are very much like the convention that was, uh, that is familiar, that you are familiar with if you worked with SMMT. But uh, as I said, the, the method of transferring of uh, transferring the alarms from the devices to Breezeview is uh, completely different over a uh, Netcom, not over uh, TCP. Okay, so this is the standard and quick access with quick filtering option. Again, you can do this through the main menu, alarm, and we are inside the alarms view. Okay, the same search widget. We can filter by dates of the alarm being received. Okay, we can show all or show only active alarms or only cleared alarms. 
we can choose a specific alarm. If we if we just highlight, uh, just place the cursor and, uh, and uh, put on a specific alarm and uh, press on the mouse, what we will get uh, is the alarm detail screen. Okay, on the bar, on the upper hand side, uh, upper side of the frame, you can see that we can uh, insert comments if we uh, performed anything, handled, started handling it. At the bottom side, we can see the recurrences of the alarm. Now, this is very efficient in cases that we have recurring alarms. The same alarm for the same device, it will be aggregated here. And in the alarms table, we will not see more than one instance of this alarm. If we drill down here, then we can see the clearing and opening of the alarm and uh, uh, get an idea if it is a, uh, a problem uh, that needs to be dealt with not only the alarm itself, but the fact that it is recurring, etc. Of course, this can be a very long list, which we can uh, use the purge button uh, that will enable us to leave only the last occurrence and that and uh, just don't, not having too much information inside each alarm. Okay, this before the purge and after the purge. Alarms can be configured to be forwarded by email. Okay, we can define uh, any number of email addresses uh, that will receive uh, the alarms. Uh, in the settings menu, we have this uh, interface by which we can define them. Okay, we have can uh, define from uh, and to, as you see the two, uh, a field can accept multiple uh, multiple uh, email addresses. <clears throat> okay, and the second thing is, okay, alarms can be forwarded by SNMP. Uh, for those of you which are working with uh, uh, with um, third party or upper OSS systems and uh, want to see the alarms in a single system that aggregates uh, various NMS systems, then we can configure a uh, breeze view uh, to forward the alarms by SNMP uh, onto an OSS. Users management. Okay, the way to access this through the menu, the setting option, and we have a uh, various options, users, uh, features, licensing, and alarms that we just saw. If we choose the Breezy users, you can see we have three uh, default users in the system. The admin user, that as we said in the beginning, the default password when we install a new system is admin. Uh, we have a public user, which is read-only. We have a temp user, which is not default, it's something we created. You will have an admin user and a public user on a new system. You can uh, you can create any number of users. For each user, you have you can uh, define a password and a, uh, an authorization level. Various operations done in Breezeview uh, are uh, are uh, registered in the uh, in the logs of the uh, NMS uh, with the name of the user that uh, performed them. So this enables uh, following up on different operations if we need to follow up and see who did this. Only admin user can add, delete, or lock users. And there is an unlimited number of users and a limited number of simultaneous client sessions. Okay, the number can be very high. The performance in this aspect is uh, very good. We hadn't had any case of problematic performance with a large number of sessions. And authorization levels, admin, read, write, read only, and no access, which is a user that is defined but is locked and actually not working. This is uh, what we uh, would say currently about user management. A CLI, basically everything uh, that can be done from the Breezy client can be done by a command line. It's a Juniper-based uh, command line uh, implementation. There are operations 
which you will find that are uh, easier or more efficient to do uh, from CLI if you're uh, comfortable with working with uh, a console and not the uh, GUI. How to access the CLI? The more uh, easy but not very convenient option is to use the menu. Again, menu, CLI, and you get a console. Very easy to uh, to access, but not very efficient. Uh, it's not a very uh, friendly console. The better way to use that is to log in to the uh, Linux operating system on which Breezu is installed. Uh, there you access the CLI, and then you have all the um, all the capabilities of the software you use to connect by SSH. As I said, it supports the full set of actions available in the client, and I'll add, and more. Everything that can be done from CLI, which is also everything that can be done from the client, can be done by uh, REST API. REST API meaning um, you can write scripts or uh, functionalities or software that uh, do everything uh, that connect by the REST HTTP protocol to the BreezeView interface and can do anything. Uh, supports scripting for advanced implementation. Uh, we have uh, quite a few uh, working uh, scripts like that that can do, and these are examples. Uh, for instance, if we need uh, to perform uh, continuous and over time collection of UE KPIs. As you remember from the client, this is done only and intentionally done only uh, ad hoc. But if, say, we are in a, in a period of uh, sizing or uh, bettering or improving the network and we need to be more hands-on, then what, can, what we can do is write a script that connects, let's say, every five minutes uh, to breathe you, initiates a collection of UE KPIs uh, for a single sector, for a single uh, base station, for all the network, and we can write it down, and then we have an over uh, time and cross-network uh, visibility of performance. I just want to remind you that uh, we always uh, uh, put a grain of salt at the way. We always warn that this comes with a price of using Airlink resources. We can do IHSS provisioning, uh, interfacing with uh, uh, various uh, provisioning systems, uh, etc. Okay, we talked about IHSS, uh, and uh, we'll see in the client IHSS management, internal IHSS management. Again, access from the menu, IHSS, and we have here the uh, the centralized IHSS view. Again, on the right, on the left hand side, the search button, on the right hand side, a uh, actions button. We have the IHSS, the IMSI as the link that will enter us into the same uh, IMSI details view that we saw before. All operations, like it says here, are also available through CLI or through REST interface. And this will drill us down into the same view we saw before. In the detail, CBRS management, which is uh, very relevant, I think, to those of you in North America. Again, menu, CBRS. Okay, so this is the way to access it. Uh, there is this system that uh, we prepared uh, uh, the the presentation from doesn't have CBRS configuration, so we will not get into this now. A few uh, general uh, comments. Okay, server, server specifications. Okay, according, uh, highlights according to uh, the volume of VNODs, ETCs in the network. Okay, you see up to 10, up to 100, 1,000, 6,000. Uh, the, the, the reason it is done according to enode VEPC is because of the volume of work with enode and EPCs that is constant uh, with, the, with them. We are constantly in, in communication while, as, I, as we said, with UEs, basically it's 
uh, with each UE once every day, just a handshake and not more. Um, stressful operations like uh, performance collection done uh, basically um, only ad hoc. Okay, number of cores, of CPU cores, virtual memory. The, uh, you can uh, remember that Review is a very uh, virtual memory loving system. Okay, the more the better. The uh, hard disks, as we said, the main uh, consumer of hard disk space is the performance uh, KPI collection of ENOBs and EPCs. The speed of the, uh, the disks is a very important factor in the performance that you will uh, experience in the review client. CentOS 7 is the current operating system we are working with. Last, latest Google Chrome as the recommended browser. Considerations for spec. As I said, as much uh, virtual memory as available, the more the merrier. Hard disk speed, uh, because a lot of the work is uh, in the regular running of the system is done for a collection and uh, for uh, a writing into the database or from extracting from the database to KPI, that the hard disk uh, speed is very important and very, um, it's very, uh, has a great effect on the performance. Highly recommended to install SSD drives, which are getting uh, uh, cheaper uh, every day. And uh, if you can, it's very much recommended. Okay, I think we were about eight minutes more than uh, initially planned for this. Uh, as I said, only the for new users, the highlights, uh, any questions if you have uh, for now, or you prefer uh, uh, to save them at, uh, to the session of next week for uh, advanced users. I see a question here. Just a second, I'll open it. What are the main differences between firmware, you, uh, between write, read, write, and admin users? Uh, the only, uh, basically, the only difference is the option of the admin user to uh, to add, uh, create, or delete the users. Other than that, uh, configuration, provisioning, etc., they are one of the same. Okay, so I see uh, nothing more at the moment. Uh, thank you. And um, you're welcome. You were uh, invited to uh, next week's session. And as I said, if you can, if you have and you can uh, uh, share with us the questions or uh, uh, things you'd like us to expand on uh, in, uh, in the session for advanced users, you're uh, it, it will be very efficient to send the questions or the issues uh, by mail to Taryn uh, or Alex in advance. Other, otherwise, uh, we will prepare of, uh, a list of uh, frequently asked questions and issues and just uh, go over them uh, in depth. Okay, so thank you very much.